in today's problem which is called partition labels so in this we are given a string s of lowercase english letters and we want to partition the string into as many parts as possible so that each letter appears in at most one part part so this is the requirement uh, divide it into as many as many parts uh, but each letter appears in uh, at most one part so this is the requirement and return return the return a list of integers uh, representing the size of these parts so okay so let's look at the example so suppose the example is this long string and then nine then seven then eight it's a little bit longer screen so uh, string so and difficult to read but I'll just tell you what the observation here is uh, which is like if each letter can appear only in one part uh, that basically means um, uh, that if any character is coming in one part uh, that will not occur in any other part because it can come in at most one part right uh, and if that character is present then uh, it will be present in one part at least so that means that each character is present only in one part right otherwise the character is not present in the string itself so if you look at this string uh, so let's look at the um, first 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 uh, so let's look at a smaller example so we will just run it <laughs> so suppose tr string was a b a c d c then um, so if we think about character A, then this can be one partition uh, because A occurs in only in this part. And if we think about B, then this can be one part. But that part is already a part of A because if you take this part out, then there will be one part which will be on left of it and there will be one part which will be on right of it and A will be in both of those parts. So that can't happen. So the part can be this one only. So that's why the first part will be ABA. So if you look at C, then the second part will be this. So if you just run the code, let's just see uh, what is the output. So that so that we understand the question correctly. So it is three comma three. So that is this this part and this part. So suppose if I just change this B D D to B. So now we need to understand what the solution will be right now, uh, and that will help us come up with a solution. <coughs> so so if we look at A, then we know that this can be a part. But if we make this as a part, then now the second part contains B and the first part contains B, which violate the condition. So that's why this uh, the part has to extend till here. But now you have C in this part and C in this part. So that's why you have to extend till here. Right. So that's why there will be only one part and the length will be six. So that is the case. So how we how we how we can solve using this example, uh, we can see how we can solve this problem. Is just look at the first character and look where it ends. So if it ends at uh, any character, then basically we know that the first part has to be at least this. Then what we are doing is we are iterating over the elements of this part, and and we see if there is any other character in between which ends further from the current current part we are looking at so suppose the second b was not here but here then it does not matter because the first part is already ending after b so this uh, b will not affect the first part so so if so we see if the ending of the character in that part is extending beyond the part we are considering so right now for this b it is so right now for a we were con considering only this part but b tells us that no i want to go till here so the first part will extend till here similarly for c so if there was something like d t e then uh, then actually the, the first part will actually end here because now there is no member in this part which will say that i want to extend uh, the uh, i want to extend the ending so suppose this e was here then it would want the ending to be extended till here so th that is the trick so let's try to follow that trick in the given example and see if we can uh, make something out of it so we look at a and we see that the last occurrence of a is here so the length of the string is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 uh, then if we look at b so there is no b afterwards so this is the part which we will consider as first part then a we are all, all we have already looked at a so no worries uh, b again we know that there is no b in the other part so we are okay so if we look at c 
the last occurrence of C is also in this part. So the first part is self-contained. So like I mean it started with A and it ended with A. So that is the first part. That's why the first part of answer is 9. Now we have done, now we are done with this part. So now, now we look at D. And D starts here but ends here. So this is the second part candidate. But if we look at E, then E actually goes till here. So now the so so, so if we were looking at D only, then the part the length of the part was one, two, three, four, five, six. But now E said I want to extend one more. So you extended one more, now it is seven. Then we look at F. There is no F in the uh, other part, so F will be inside this part only. If you look at E, we already know. G is also in this part only and then similarly for D and E. So that's why the second part is of length 7. So now we are done till here. Now we look at this one. So if you look at H, the part will be till here, so which is of length 4. But then I look at I. So I will say I want to go till here. Otherwise it will violate the condition. So now the last, uh, now this part starting with H will extend till here. But now you see J. So J will say that I want to extend also. So now this whole string will be a part. So that's why there will be only three parts and the lengths will be 9, 7 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that is how we are going to solve it. So we will solve this problem in two ways. Uh, first problem will be doing exactly what I told you that we will be considering uh, endpoint for any start point and we will, be just, uh, we will just keep extending the endpoint and whenever that endpoint cannot be extended then we have found one part. And uh, I, we will uh, we will uh, do a second solution as well, in which we will see we will try to see if I am looking at a current index, can I partition it here? How can I check that? I can just check. Uh, so I will explain this approach for second solution when I am starting with the second solution. So we will try to implement the first approach first, and I will also give a hint to one more approach. Uh, I have not implemented it, but I think that should work and should be a good exercise. Uh, so the third approach which I, which I was talking about which I have not implemented <coughs> is something like this. So suppose you have some characters right? and as I told you need to mark where one character is starting and one where one character is ending. So suppose the first character is starting here and it is ending let's say here. Let, let's say the second character uh, let's say the second character so second character is starting here but it is ending here only. So now you can see that it does not extend the first range. So suppose the third character is starting here but it is ending further. Right. Let's say fourth character is starting here <coughs> and ending here. Right. So, so, so it can happen that the first character is A and last fourth character is also A, then the end point will be same, but right now let's say they are different. So now we keep doing this and we get so many ranges, right? So if we do this for all the characters, uh, let's look at a simpler example. So basically th these are the kind of uh, ranges we want to make. So we will look at the example we looked earlier and A, B, A. A, B, A, C, B, A, right? So for this case, the range will start, first range will start here and it go till here. The second range, it will start here and go till here only, right? Uh, the third range, uh, third A is actually till here only because uh, it starts here and ends here. We can extend the range as well, but uh, it, it, we don't need to. So if we go till, if we start at C, then the range is this one. And if we start at D, the range is this one. And if we start at last C, the range is this one. So now basically what we want to do is we have some ranges and we want to just merge them. If we merge those ranges, the number of, so basically we don't merge when only, uh, so basically we merge the ranges which are inside each other. Uh, or basically they are overlapping. The endpoints are not considered as overlapping. So, uh, so the how many, however many ranges uh, remain in the end, that will be your solution. So this uh, merging ranges is a popular interview question. So that will also be a good exercise. So what happens here is these three ranges will merge into each other because this is contained in this and this is also contained in this. So ultimately you will have these two ranges, one and second range will be this. So that's why answer will be two, which will be three, uh, three comma three array of line two, uh, which will be three comma three. If you look at this one, the ranges look like something like this. 
so this one but now b starts here and it goes till here but i'll just skip a okay so i'll not skip so if you look so last one was let's say c so if you start with c it will start here and go till here and if you look at uh, b again it will just be here and if you look at last c it will just be here right so if you merge these three ranges these will become one but when you merge these two ranges it will again become one and these two ranges can be merged so the final range will be uh, this one right uh, six only so th that's the answer so, so there is only one range so uh, these two ranges do not merge because only endpoint is uh, matching so we, we, we can just uh, change our merging criteria that endpoint it has to overlap right so that is the case so you can solve this problem in this way as well so uh, th this is the third method which i was talking about and other two methods i will implement this i will not implement but you can just search how to merge intervals uh, it is a popular interview problem and it will be helpful if you know how to solve it so let's start with the first solution which we talked about that we start with uh, starting point and ending point of a number and we keep extending the ending point for for a given range uh, so uh, one one thing to note notice is when we when do we know that we are at the end so basically if we are at the end so suppose you are at the end of this a then actually current index will be equal to the current ending which we are looking at so that, that's that's when we know uh, that we can uh, make make uh, make a partition right so let's implement the first first solution so let's handle the corner case first so return zero so this is it right so uh, but now uh, i would like to uh, i would quickly like to know where where one character is ending so we don't need to know where it is starting because we are only concerned with the end so let, let's see how, how we can do it so we will create a hash map or um, you, in, a, in your languages you can create a map uh, i'll just call it uh, right so this will contain for every character where in the string uh, what is the index uh, where the last occurrence is so this is my hash and is equal to zero and i so this is what we want now um, let's say character at string i or you can just use directly as well so if if uh, character is the character at the i index so now what we need to do if it is not so basically uh, i am making uh, so because we need to find the last occurrence we, we want to start from the last so we will start from n minus 1 and we will go till 0 otherwise you can just do max of index you have found till now uh, but I will do this way so if you start from the ending right the first occurrence of any character will be the last index so hope it makes sense uh, because we are starting from the ending so if uh, so basically if, if I am starting from the end and I know that char is uh, if char is not in yeah so if character is not in s that means from the right side from the opposite side this is the first occurrence that means uh, from the left side this will be the last occurrence so we can just put it and hash of char is i so basically uh, character ends at i so uh, next time you see char you already know that uh, we have already visited it so you don't need to update it so this is the end hash so we can just print it for a string to just see what it gives so console so let's say we have these two strings only a b a c d c and a b a c b c right so we'll just run it so a should be zero and so we'll just see carinus for c in so in s we can't do it but we wanted to do if it is already present in the end hash so basically uh, we are saying that if we have not encountered it on already in the end hash then only we know that it is the last occurrence so s was a mistake because we are already looking at a character and also you can't use in operator in a string it seems in javascript so let's see so for a the ending ending index is 2 for b the endings index is 1 
for C it is uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and D it is 4. Similarly, you can check the second one as well, like A is 2, B is B should be this 4 and C will be this 5. So now we know the endings of each character. So now, so basically uh, you can have that in form of an array, then you can do some array manipulation, but I'll just uh, construct the answer now. So let's see. So let answer be my array. So here what I will store is, I will, st so basically as I said that I will start with the starting character and see where it ends and uh, I'll keep expanding the end point whenever if there is any other member in the range which can extend that end point, right? So whenever that end point matches the current index, I know I can partition there. So I will just store those indices in the answer. So let's see how it works. So this is a little bit of implementation and uh, you will have to read the code a little bit. So um, so let's see. So let uh, current end, which is the uh, current end will be, uh, it will be, so let, let's say, uh, so let, so we will, because we will be iterating, so that's why I'm doing this, uh, actually we don't need it I think. But because we are iterating, I will do this uh, current end. So if we are iterating and we are again looking at current end, then it should be actually um, current end of what is the current end at i. So if it is current end i, current end which is already the end of the current range or the end of this character, right? So as I said, uh, if, if we are looking at uh, something like this, this string, Right, so if I look at this A, then uh, actually it will say that the end of my part should be at index 2. Uh, but but you should rem uh, so if you, if you are at this A, the current end will be this index 2. But when you come to B, uh, the current end will be 2, but you want to see where B ends. So B ends at this index, so current range's end should be extended till 4. So that is what this line will do if it, uh, if it happens, right. So th this is what current. How, this is how we will extend current end for any uh, for any index, right? And now what we do is we iterate over that while I is let that. Uh, so let's make it equal. Otherwise, you will have to do some arithmetic there. Uh, so uh, I is less than. So let's also remember to increment it, right? So so we iterate over all the elements. So for example, in this case, when we were doing a, then the current end was oh one second. So uh, so current end was this index two. So we iterate over all the elements to see if we can extend the current end, right? So but when we reach b, we know that we have to extend the current end. So how do we extend it? The same thing, right? So basically. If, uh, if, the, if the current end of my range, which I'm looking at, is less than this, right? Then basically we need to update it. So that is what, so let, let that sink in. So basically, if so, look at this example. So if, if we are if we are iterating over this range, we know that the end is, at, end is here. But if we come at B, then it has to be extended here. But then we come at C, then we know it has to be extended till here. So that is what this while loop will do. Just remember that i is incremented here, so we will iterate only once. So we will not come at any uh, index which was visited earlier. So that's why the complexity should be linear. Uh, because uh, i is in initialized only once right? and we are just incrementing. So the problem here is uh, when we exit this loop, so suppose we are at any index so for example in first case we will exit when the index will be this point so this will also increment i and this will also increment i and in that case we will skip one character so that's why i will just remove this increment this is implementation detail and you should read uh, this code to understand why this is happening so as i explained there will be two increments in th this case right uh, so other method is like you know that anytime you are matching uh, there will be one increment so you can decrement here and increment here but I'm not doing it. I'm just removing the increment from here, right? So that's it. So now remember that whenever I matched with current end, um, so if I matched with current end, uh, then uh, then we are exiting. All right, cool. So then uh, basically whenever it matched, that is the index where we can partition. So we will just answer, uh, we will just push it to answer. That's it. I think that is all we need to do here. 
and we then uh, print the answer to see what is what is it giving because right now it will not give the correct answer because we actually need to return length so i'm just checking if it is giving the correct answers as uh, for now so let's see what is giving what is it giving and my answer is undefined okay no so i'm printing it so it is 9 but the original answer is 9 7 8 so can we see any uh, relation between these? Yes. So if you look at 9 plus 7, uh, that is 16 and 16 plus 8, uh, which is 24. Right. Uh, so just listen, let me think about this. Set. So ninth character, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that is 9. Hmm. Okay, okay, so this while loop will end when actually i plus 1 has happened. So that's why it is uh, ending at this d. So that means that next partition will start from here. So that is okay for us. That is not an issue. So now we know that we are getting the correct indices from where the partition should start. Right. Uh, so first partition will start at 9. Oh, actually it will end. Cool. Alright, so what we got in these indices is like the first partition will start at 0 definitely we know that and the second partition will start at 9, uh, the third one will start at 16 and I think this will be the last index, right. So that is what that is actually we can actually derive this answer or uh, we can actually derive answer from this indices. So basically the idea is uh, we got the indices where the partition has to be done. Right. So how do we get it? So that is easy. So now we know if we have 9, 16, 24, you can just create final answer array from answer array. Right. And you, what you can do is you can iterate from the first index and just keep storing that difference. So for example, first element will be 9, but you will start from the second element iteration and you store 16 minus 9, which will be 7 and you store 24 minus 16, which will be 8. So that's how you can get the answer. If you look at the second one, you store the first one as is and you do 6 minus 3. Other other case is you prepend 0 and then you just take the differ array, like 9 minus 0, 16 minus 9, but uh, both phase can be done. But I will also show a simple trick, uh, which, which with which you can do it like in uh, here only. So if you want to, if you want to be more clear, it's better to calculate differ array separately. Uh, but let's say I'll do this. So the last index where we started was zero. So what is the length of the current part? This one. And now what is the next last index where we started? That is I done. So that is what we we were, we were doing in the diff array, right? As I said that prepend it with zero and just take the diff. So that is what we are doing. And just let's just return this. One return answer. So now you don't need to calculate the diff array, but it will be more clear if you do it uh, later. Right, so 9783366 uh, looks okay to me. So let me submit it. So this is accepted. I'll explain once more what we did. So uh, what we did was we know where each character is ending. So we start with the first character and see where the range for this will end. So it will, so we will start with D, let's say. So we will say this will start at D, but it will go till D. Then we iterate on that range and see if any of the element in that range can extend the current end of the range. So when we were looking at this range, we came at E, but it said that the current range is still D only, but I want it to be till E. So that is what this loop will do. And then we'll go to next. And whenever we are able to uh, reach that current end, we will just say that uh, we, have, we have found one more index where the partition is there and this trick, this i minus last index is just storing the length from the last partition. So that's it. So that's how we can get the partition. Right, so this is the solution for uh, this one. Uh, we will look at uh, one more solution now. So, so this is the first solution and should be good enough. This is a little tricky to understand what is going on here. Second solution is a little bit simpler uh, to understand. So let's look at what is the second idea is. So we will keep this um, uh, base case, uh, so uh, or the corner case, whatever. Uh, but let's see uh, what we can do. So now, suppose I am at any index, and I can say that I want to partition here, right? So if I can say that, uh, then also we can tell how many partitions will be there, right? Um, so so that so the thing to know here is we don't have option as to choose where we do we want to partition it or not because we want as many as possible so basically we have to break as early as possible so because the first partition you want to make it as small as possible um, so for example look at this case 
So for this case, A, B, A, C, D, C, you can also say that A, B, A, C, D, C, that is only one partition is also a solution, but that is not the case because we have to find as many as possible, right? So at whatever index you can partition it, you should partition it. So that is the thing, you can call it greedy. Uh, so, so that is what we want to do. So somehow I want to figure out at a particular index uh, that am I able to partition here? And if I am able to partition it at the current ind current index, I just add that index to the answer array, and uh, using that same diffing technique, we will just be able to find the lengths, right? So we will do this. So how can I do that, right? So 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 how can I do it? So basically, what is the requirement for a partition, right? So so we need to look at something else for this. So we are considering the same case again, A B A C D C, and let's say we also have E F E. Right. So, so what were the possible partitions first of all? So this was a, also a possible partition. Right. But we don't want this because we can make more partition. So we can make two partitions. But actually, we can make three partitions. So need we need to remember is that uh, if we have if we have already made one partition, and if we look at this index C, then this was also a valid partition. So basically, when you come at this index, our function will give us that yes, you can partition here. And when you commit here, right, then again it should give yes, you can partition here. Uh, but uh, we don't want to store the state that, uh, okay, so don't worry about that uh, detail. But the thing is that it should give uh, true for this index and this index as well, right? So how can we say that we can break here and we can break here as well, right? So the thing which we will use is that if there was any character which was in this part, it ended here only. So that character will not be in the right side. Right, so I will I will somehow store uh, that what all characters are on the left side, and I will store what all what all characters are on the uh, left and right side. Basically, I'll store what is on the left side, and I'll store what is on the right side, and in, at any index, I will uh, check uh, basically if uh, there is any character which is present in both the parts. If it is, then I can't partition here. For example, if my index were here, uh, then actually A is present in both the parts then I can't partition here. But if I come here, then I see that A is present here, but A is not present here. I see that B is present here, but, but B is not present here. So so basically now I can um, partition it, right? So so that's how our function will work. So we need, uh, so basically we want to store somehow what is on the left and what is on the right. Uh, there are multiple ways to do it. Uh, I'll use a data structure which is similar to set. It is called a bag. Right. Uh, so this is also called multi-set. Right. So why multi? -set? So why not set? Because we can have multiple occurrences of a number. And so basically, if I am at, uh, so suppose I am moving from, um, okay. Let me come up with some example. I have to remove something. So I'm removing something. Okay, so suppose I was at this index and my right side's data structure knew that there are there is C in the set and when I move from this index to this index, I know that from the right data structure, I have to remove C. If, if it was only a set right, then it can't store multiple occurrences. That's why we use multi-set because if you remove C, it will also remove this C and now that right side set will say that no, I don't have C, but that is not the case we want. So that's why we use something called a multi-set or a bag. So you can think of a bag as, as like a normal bag only. So this is the ADT for bag, right? So you can put anything or you can add anything. You can remove anything and you can just say has, like has a key, right? So these are, and you can also add multiple utilities like is empty, uh, current capacity, current uh, size, right? But we don't need those. So basically we need this only. So suppose we have a data structure called bag or multi-set. Uh, which supports these functionalities a little bit faster. Uh, this is add, remove, and does it contain a key? So what we can do is uh, first let's say we have we have a bag which contains all the characters. So now when we move from one index to next, we will the current uh, current character which we moved over, we will remove it. We will add it to the left bag, and we will remove it from the right bag. And after doing this operation, we will uh, we will see if there is any common uh, character in the bags. And if there is no common character, that means we can split it, right? So that is what I explained that if I'm look at any index, if there are no characters which are on both of the sides, then we can split here. So bag will tell us. So this has function, right? This can quickly tell us that 
if I have this character in the left bag and if I have this character in the right bag, right? So we will try to do this uh, this implementation that we look at any in index and we see if there is any common thing on the left and right. All right. So for that, uh, JavaScript does not have a multiset implemented uh, as far as I know. Uh, but we can just wrap the common uh, map uh, in, in 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 a little bit of utility to make a multiset. So let's call this class a bag. So your language, if it does not have uh, a multiset, then you can just implement it like this. So you need a map. So this dot, let's say map. So th th this should have a map. Then it will have functions like add. It will have function like remove, so it should add a key. Then it should be able to remove a key, and it should be able to say that do I have a key? So does bag bag dot has key right? So this is what we want to implement. So how do we go about this? Adding key is easy. Oh uh, yeah. So what is the trick to use map as a bag? Is basically instead of just saying that I contain this element, I I count how many times it is contained. So if it is contained two times and I want to remove it, I will just decrement the count. So basically, this is a frequency map. So when when I decrement the count and it becomes one, then I don't need to do anything. But when it becomes zero, then I can just I can just remove that key, right? So for example, the frequency was two, and I say, does it contain that key? It will say yes. Then I remove one one time then the frequency is one again the has function will say yes right but suppose when it was zero and then i will remove that key itself from this map then the has function will say uh, that i don't have it right so let's implement this back data structure so this is how i do it uh, there should be efficient there might be efficient way so how many keys there are which are possible so the total number of keys which are possible is only 26 so we don't need to worry too much about the complexity but uh, the idea should be clear so you can implement it maybe faster using just an array itself so because the range is co constant like right it is from a to z and it is very linear so you can just create an array of size 26 and just mark the presence or absence or frequency in this array in your language and it is very very commonly used in computer programming if you are, if you do that hashing alphabets with the 26 size uh, integer array right but i am using this so it also gives an idea of how to implement a simple multi set so if this key uh, is is not in hash so if it is not in hash then what do we do is uh, this dot map if it is not in map then this dot map key is equal to zero so first we add it and suppose it was already there and now if it is a new key we do just this is equal to or plus equal one right so hope this is clear so how i am adding it if it is already present then just increment its frequency uh, and if it is uh, not present then just add zero and then we will increment it so you can do one here as well and uh, put this in else uh, but i'm used to doing it this way so i'm doing it this way right now uh, and then uh, let has key what, what will be has key that that is very trivial return key in the start map so if key is present uh, then we can just return you can also implement something like the frequency is more than or zero or something like that but let's see so if key if key is not itself in the map uh, then then return false so this is a semantics you can just ignore it or you can just return nothing here as well you can have a void function um, but javascript doesn't have a type so it doesn't matter so this dot map so i'm using this dot map and this dot map so otherwise if it is there then we decrement it right so that is what so whenever we want to remove we decrement the frequency and if we just see that uh, if this dot map this dot map uh, frequency of this key is is less than one right so basically it is zero or like negative it should not be but uh, let's say it is less than one so basically there is no occurrence and then you just delete that key so that's it and now for semantic we will just return true so this is what this is the data structure I was talking about that it can say that I, I, I just have a bag just add anything to it just remove anything for it and you can ask me if I, I contain this element or not right so just let's check that we are not making any syntactical mistakes 
start map so it looks okay to me so we will just start using it so how do we solve that problem with with this data structure right so as i said we will have one write bag which will con contain everything from the from right of my current index so let's say new bag and const left bag is equal to new left new bag so as i said uh, when we are starting we will we will put everything in the right bag because uh, we, will, we are starting here so uh, left bag will be empty in the beginning so how to add everything to the uh, right bag so that is easy for let uh, for every character of s so let me write proper names of s right back dot add so i am assuming that add and remove end has so just remembering the function names so right back dot add i just add that character to that back right now i need to basically um iterate over all of them and as i said i will store the indices here so for iterate over everything and i this one so now what we do is uh, const char is equal to s of i so now we have the current character so whenever we look at a character uh, we just see that if we can uh, we add it to the left bag as i mentioned and we remove it from the right back so we remove it actually so we remove that from the right back as i said right so when we are iterating over any index we move over we see a character we remove we add it to the left back and remove it from the right back so now we need to check uh, if if they have anything in common so if has common uh, left bag so we will have to implement this function if if it has anything in if it does if it has anything in common then we know that we can't partition it but if it does not have anything in common so i added a not here if it does not have anything in common we'll just put push answer dot push i so we know that at this index we can uh, break right so that is what i am doing for every index so it, the answer will now contain all the ind indices where i can break so there are some issues with with this implementation but we will solve them right so i'll comment this part and i will implement this function which says uh, do i have anything common so how do we find if uh, both bags have anything in common so there are multiple ways to do it you can implement uh, uh, an intersection of those two bags something like that but i will use something brute force because the number of keys is actually uh, so suppose there is two bags a and b so the number of keys is actually very small so const cares is equal to a b c d e f g h i j k so it's generally better that you copy this from somewhere so that you don't miss anything so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 So 26 characters and now you can just iterate for all the characters let's see of cares so if uh, so now what do you say here to see if it is common so you say if uh, a has so instead of a b just for clarity I will write left and right so that it makes more sense in this context left dot has if left has c and right also has c right uh, that means that yes we have something in common and then we return true if for every element it is not common then return false because the keys are only th these many so th there can cannot be any other key so that's why we are able to use this so if it is not if it does not have any common only at that index we will be able to partition uh, so let's run it and let's see what it gives actually so it will be by one uh, it will be off by one it, i think so it is giving 8 15 23 so it is giving 8 so 0 1 2 okay lo let's look at the second example it is easier so it is giving 0 1 2 uh, which is correct so basically it is giving that it will first partition will end at 2 and 3 4 5 the second partition will end at 5 right so as I mentioned in the last solution as well uh, we are getting the correct indices here um, you, you can uh, basically 
uh, find the answer array using these indices, how do you do it? So we know it is ending here. So that means that the next partition will start one index above it. So convert this index to uh, 3 comma 6. And then you do that diff thing again. So then it will give you 3 comma 3. Similarly for this, if you do plus 1, then this will be 9, this will be 16 and this will be 24 where the partitions are starting. Uh, because the index is zero based, right? So the length of the partition ending at eight will be nine. So that's why. So there are multiple ways to do it. So I'll I'll do it in the similar way I did in the last case. So I will I'll have a last index thing here, and I will call it zero. You can use minus one as well. But if you use zero, then you have to do this, right? because uh, that is so the if, if i'm doing i plus one that means the next partition is starting from i plus one that means the first partition started from zero if you do minus one that means that the previous uh, partition ended at minus one and then you can use i but i'll use something like this and then last index is equal to i plus one so now this should give me the correct answer So last index is not defined, maybe spelling mistake. Now it should work. So 978, I will click on show diff. So no diff. So just to make sure that it's clear, last index, last. So this is start index of last partition. Right, so so that it's more clear why, why we have to do i plus one and not only i. Right, so that's why. So if you don't want to do this, then you want to do something like end of last partition. Right, then what happens is uh, because the first partition started at zero, then the initial value has to be minus one. That means we are imagining a partition which ended at minus one so that the next one can start at zero. So now you can just easily do i minus end of partition. Oh no, so copy this paste it here and paste it here and this should be i so let's run it i'm not sure so i minus end of last and the end of last was this one makes sense so it is giving the same answer so that is the idea so like uh, I, so basically just to avoid so basically you just need to remember uh, what is the value of this um, default like the initial value of this variable so if it is end it has to be minus one because as i said we are assuming a partition which ended before the array um, but if you say start of the next partition then it was zero so we will try to submit this and see if there are any issues um, we'll solve it then so this is accepted so i'll just explain once more what we did so suppose we have a data structure which can just say that just keep adding things into me just keep removing things into me so you can imagine this kind of a bag where you are, we are just, just putting characters as numbers uh, as balls so you just keep putting you don't know in what order they are stored you just keep uh, putting uh, some balls in the bag and you can just remove any um, key as well any ball as well but but this query is supported that at any time the bag can tell you do i contain this ball or not right so suppose we have a data structure like this and we and we put all the characters in that bag and we iterate from left and at any index we just check if in if, if on the left side there is uh, any common uh, character with the right side if there is any common character that means my partition can't be here so whenever the partition can be here that means that all the characters of same kind will be on the left bag and there will be no common thing and how are we checking all the common things we check for every possible key does it if it is present in both then that means there is something common otherwise it is not and that's it so whenever it is not common so one more thing which i think i missed was um, so if you look at this right so that technique uh, so basically one thing which you have to notice is that when you are here right for example after e so that means that there can be one big partition here but actually it is consisting of two partitions but even then we are able to say it uh, that there is nothing common because this partition is self-contained and this partition is self-contained so that condition holds here as well, that all the characters which are here nothing of them will be here so that's why so basically if you add two partitions together they will also form a valid partition uh, which will satisfy this condition each character will appear at most once uh, in at most one part right um, so that's why so that was a minor thing 
So hope, hope this was helpful. And also I talked about that third kind of solution where you can merge intervals. It will be a fun exercise if you want to implement it. So, uh, so hope this was helpful. Thank you.